Hello, and welcome to the second episode of me reading R.L. Stein's Goosebumps Horrorland series. We are now going to move on to Revenge of the Dummy. Chapter 6. Startled, I stumbled back and nearly knocked Molly over. Mr. Malloy laughed. Good one, Ethan, he said. Ethan grinned at me. I'm a pretty cool ventriloquist, he said. I got you, Brittany. He did a fast tap dance and ended it by stomping hard on my foot. Ethan, you're so not funny, I cried. I could feel my face turning hot. I knew I was blushing. How embarrassing to fall for that trick. Molly turned to her dad. Do you really believe that mind-stealing stuff? She asked. He scratched his head. I take all these legends seriously, he said. The legends tell a lot about people and their beliefs. Yes or no? Molly asked. Do you think it can steal minds or not? Her dad was silent for a moment. Then he said, yes, I guess I do believe it. <laughs> Weirdos. <laughs> Molly's mouth dropped open. Dad, if you believe this awful doll is so dangerous, how can you keep it in our house? Good question, Molly. <laughs> okay. It's under triple thick glass, Mr. Malloy replied. That should make it safe. But Dad, I'm still studying it, he told her. I've got to call in some experts. I gotta call in some experts. There are people who know a lot more about the doll than I do. I'm waiting to hear from them. In the meantime, I believe the triple thick glass will make sure that... Before he could finish, that brat, Ethan, cried. Brittany, you're blocking my view! And he bumped me hard from behind into the doll case. As my forehead hit the glass, I saw the doll bounce. Then I heard a loud buzz. I gasped. Oh no! My mind! Chapter 7 Whoa. Wait. I heard the buzz again. My brain whirred. It took me so long to realise the doll wasn't buzzing. The sound came from my mobile phone. I let out a sigh of relief. It was only my wild imagination going berserk again. I pulled the phone out of my pocket and flipped it open. A text message from my mom. Dinner almost ready, come home soon. I told Molly and Mr. Malloy we had to leave. Ethan started whining that he didn't want to go. He wanted to stay and check out the other weird dolls and objects. But I was happy to get out of there. The Mind Stealer doll was too creepy to think about. And Mr. Malloy admitted he didn't even know if it was safe to keep it in the house. I knew I'd have nightmares about it. When we got home, Mom was going crazy in the kitchen, with two pots steaming on the stove. And a chicken roasting in the oven. She blew a strand of hair off her forehead and smiled at Ethan. I'm making my famous roast chicken in honour of your arrival tonight, she said. Not quite ready. She turned to me. 
Why don't you go up to Ethan's room and bring down the rest of your junk? Ethan gave me a hard tug that almost knocked me over. Come upstairs, fat face! I want to show you my comedy with Mr. Bad Boy. Fat face? I cried. <laughs> don't call me fat face, you. Don't call me fat face, butt breath. He giggled. Stop it, Mum said. She lifted a pot lid and ducked back as steam poured up. Name calling isn't funny. Yeah, right. Don't call names, you moron, Ethan said to me. <laughs> Who started it, you moron? <laughs> I tried to jam his elbow into my ribs. No, sorry, he tried to jam his elbow into my ribs, but I dodged away. Please, go upstairs, Mum said. Let Ethan show you his comedy act. Mum, give me a break, I moaned. That dummy is so totally lame. Mum dropped the lid back on the pot and pulled me into the kitchen door. Pulled me to the Go up there with him, Brit. He wants to share something with you. That's a good thing. But, Mom... And don't make fun of the dummy, she whispered. Poor Ethan obviously needs a friend to talk to. So he made one up. Go up to his room and be nice to him. I let out an exasperated sigh. But then I forced a smile to my face. Okay, Ethan, I said. Let's do it. He let out a cheer and went running up the attic stairs. The dummy's wooden head clonked on, the, <laughs> on each stair as Ethan dragged it by the arm. I glanced around the attic. My old room. I missed it already. The room was long and narrow with bright yellow walls. Some of my posters were still hanging up. My desk stood in front of the window between two twin beds, where Molly and I slept, that have once spent many sleepovers. No room for sleepovers now, I thought. In my tiny sewing room. And then I scolded myself. Don't be bitter, Brit. You'll get your room back when he leaves. Ethan pulled out the desk chair and sat down on it. He sat. He set Mr. Bad Boy on his lap. I dropped to the floor, settled to the white shag carpet, and leaned my back against the wall. Don't laugh too hard, Ethan said. You'll hurt yourself. No problem, I said. If you need me to explain any of the jokes, just let me know, he said. I rolled my eyes. Just do your acts, okay? Mr. Bad Boy grinned at me. His eyes opened wide. He had such an ugly smile. Totally evil. Brittany, is that your face, or did you... Or, or, did you, or did you forget to take out the rubbish, the dummy said. His voice was a shrill rasp. Be nice, Ethan scolded the dummy. That's my cousin. The dummy leaned towards me. Brittany, something just reminded me of the banana I had for breakfast. Oh yeah, your nose! The dummy tossed back his head and let out a long donkey laugh. I'm a bad boy! Is this your act? I asked Ethan. He shook his head. 
Sometimes Mr. Bad Boy doesn't cooperate. Yeah, right, I muttered. Be good, Ethan scolded the dummy. I like your long hair, Mr. Bad Boy said to me. Too bad it's all growing on your back. I burst out laughing. The joke was terrible, but Ethan was a really good ventriloquist. I couldn't see his lips move at all. Mr. Bad Boy, please, Ethan pleaded. Be nice to Brittany. The dummy's eyes stared into mine. I know we've just met, he said in his harsh, raspy voice. But I'm a very romantic dude. And I have three little words I'm dying to say to you. Three little words? I asked. Mr. Bad Boy nodded. Yeah. Take a bath! <laughs> Sorry, guys. I couldn't help myself. I laughed again. I have to admit, I love rude jokes. I guess maybe it's because I'm always so nice. Is that your face? Mr. Bad Boy asked. Or are you standing on your head? I groaned. Don't blame me for these jokes, Ethan replied. Blame Mr. Bad Boy. He turned to the dummy. You're not very nice, he told it. Then stop putting words in my mouth, Mr. Bad Boy said. That made me laugh too. I'm a bad boy. Mr. Bad Boy exclaimed. You're an awesome ventriloquist, I told Ethan. How did you learn to do that? Ethan set Mr. Bad Boy down on the bed and walked over to me. He shrugged. I don't know. Just practice, I guess. He slapped Ethan a high five. Sorry, I slapped Ethan a high five. I said, well, good work, dude. I really think you're talented. And then I gasped, because across the room Mr. Bad Boy turned his head to me and opened his mouth in an ugly laugh. Chapter 8 How did you do that? I cried. Ethan's smile faded. I didn't do it, he said. He took his hand out of his pocket and pointed to Mr. Bad Boy. He did. I frowned at him. Can't you, can't you ever be serious? I am serious, he insisted. I was trying to be nice to Ethan, but he always had to act like a jerk. I decided to give it one more try. You know, everyone in my school has to do one hour of public service, I said. That bites, said Ethan, Ethan said. Listen to me, I snapped. I've got a good idea for you. I'm going to give a painting lesson at my great aunt's retirement home. Maybe you could come too and do a funny act with Mr. Bad Boy. I bet they'd love it. Cool, Ethan replied. Yeah. Thanks. Maybe I'll practice some new jokes with him. Good. Your jokes are funny, but you need some that aren't so nasty, I said. I heard a rustling sound from the bed. Over Ethan's shoulder, I saw the dummy raise his head again. It opened his mouth and let out a long burp. I laughed. That's pretty good, Ethan, I said. Come on, for real, how do you do that? I'm telling the truth, Ethan said in a whisper. I didn't do it. He grabbed my arm. Please, believe me, Brittany. Sometimes it's like he comes to life or something. Oh, scary. <laughs> I pulled my arm away. Yeah, right. And monkeys can fly to the moon. 
But then I saw that the kid was trembling. On the other side of the bedroom, Mr. Bad Boy laughed again. A high donkey bray. I almost fell for it. But then I remembered all the dumb tricks Ethan played on me the last time he visited. He was a total trickster. He just loved making me look dumb. No way, I believe you. No way, I believe you, I said. So stop it. Give me a break. I'm trying hard to be your friend. Ethan, I want to make you feel at home here. Big whoop, said the dummy. Sorry. Big whoop! The dummy chimed in from the bed. I grabbed Ethan by the shoulders. Tell me the truth, I said. How are you doing that? He lowered his head. His shoulders shook. I thought the night that I thought he might have tears in his eyes. I am telling the truth, he whispered. This time you... You've got to believe me, Brittany. Before I could answer, I saw the dummy raise his head. The mouth worked up and down. I could hear the click of the wooden lips. And then the dummy screamed, I'm alive! Don't you get it, Brittany? I'm alive! Ethan grabbed my arm and held on tight. Help me, please, he cried. I... I don't know what to do! And that was chapter 6 to 8 of Revenge of the Living Dummy. Next time, chapters 9 to 13. Until then, thanks for watching.